Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to start looking at what derivatives are good for and what do they tell us. I'm not going to read you the top of these notes, but those are definitions pretty standard for extrema. We're going to refer to an absolute or a global extrema as the tallest point or the lowest point on a graph. And then relative extrema are going to be where the graph turns in between those. Let's just take a look at this graph right here to the right that you have. And we're going to ask where f has its absolute maximum. An absolute maximum is right out here. That's the tallest this point uh, this graph ever gets on the interval from negative 2 to 4. And that happens at x equals 4. f has its absolute minimum. The smallest this graph ever gets is out here at negative 2. There is a relative maximum. That means the graph turns from increasing to decreasing at 0. And then the graph turns from decreasing to increasing, or a relative minimum, out there at x equals 2. So that should be pretty self-explanatory. Now some important things here. We're going to define a critical number. A critical number, this is also sometimes called a critical point. This is only going to happen if you have a place where the derivative is 0 or the derivative is undefined. If we have that place, then that x value is going to be a critical point of the function. And there's a theorem that's very important. If we are going to have relative extrema, they can only occur at critical numbers. That's an important theorem. Let's take a look at one requirement for extrema. Here I've got a graph um, for A that's continuous from negative 1 out to 2. There is a minimum at x equals 0, and there is a maximum out at x equals 2. On part B, there is a minimum at x equals 0. However, there is not a maximum. I could not say the maximum occurs at 1.5 or 1.8 or 1.9. This graph never actually gets to 2. So if I said the maximum occurs at like 1.999, someone could come along and say no. It happens at 1.99999. Then we'd get in a silly little argument and there'd be name calling and you know it would be sad. So I'm going to say that there is no maximum to this graph. This graph does not have a maximum value. On part C, there is no minimum for the same reason, but there is a maximum out at x equals 2. So what conditions are necessary to guarantee that there will be a maximum and a minimum? The only condition is that we need the graph to be continuous. We need continuity to be satisfied. So that's going to give, lead us to our next definition. The extreme value theorem, or the EVT, this is an existence theorem. Sometimes you're going to answer questions like, does there exist? A maximum on this interval. And if the function is continuous, then for sure there is always an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum somewhere in between. That's what the EVT says. And there's some guidelines. I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to read those to you. I'm just going to show you how this works. We're going to find the absolute max and mins of the function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find critical numbers. We're going to find out where the derivative equals 0. So on A, my derivative is 6x minus 24. And we are going to set this equal to 0 or undefined. Now, 6x minus 24 is never undefined, but it does equal 0 whenever x equals what value? Well, if you plug in, if you add 24 to both sides and divide by 6, you get that this will equal 0 when x equals 4. So that's this first step you do is find the derivative, find the critical points. So this is a critical number of f. Potentially, the graph has a max or a min there. What we're going to do now is called the candidates test. I am going to make a table. And on my table, I'm going to ask my graph its y value at special points. The special points are going to be the endpoints, negative 1 and 5, and also any critical points that I found. And I used a calculator for this. I went in the y equals and plugged this in. At negative 1, the graph's y value is 26. At 4, the, gra the graph's y value is negative 49. And at 5, the graph's y value is negative 46. So from this information, we can find the minimum and the maximum value. And so we're supposed to state where these values occur. So I'm going to answer this as f has an absolute maximum, absolute max, of the largest number I see here is 26, and it happens at x equals negative 1. Then I'm going to say that f has an absolute minimum 
of, what's the smallest number I see here? Well, the smallest number I see is negative 49, and that happens at x equals 4. So what we've done is we took the derivative, set it equal to 0 to find out any critical points, because so if, if relative extrema occur, they only occur at critical points. But then we also have to check the endpoints, and we're just asking the graph where it is at these points. These are the only possible points where we can have max and mins. The endpoints or where the graph turns around and gets a zero derivative, or an undefined one. Let's see this again. Um, I want to find out the absolute max and mins for B, so the first thing I'm going to do is find the derivative. And that, that derivative would be 18x squared minus 24x cubed. And if I factor this, I'm going to get, factor out a 6x squared, leaving me, leaving me inside with a 3 minus 4x. And setting this equal to 0, that's going to happen when x equals 0 and when x equals 3 fourths. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to set up the candidates test. I'm going to have x and I'm going to have f of x. And here I'm going to have four values to check. I'm going to go ahead and scoot this down and I'll erase it over that in just a second. I'm going to check negative 1 and I'm also going to check my critical points which are 0. I'm going to check 3 fourths and I'm going to check my endpoint of 2. And again I plug these in on the calculator and I got some y values. Negative 7, 5, 5 5.6328 and then negative 43. So our statements are going to be f has a or an absolute maximum of my largest number here 5.6328 and it happens at x equals 3 fourths. And then my next statement is going to be f has an absolute minimum of, look at your chart, the y values, the smallest number there is obviously negative 43, and that happens at x equals 2. Okay, so I'm going to erase that stuff when I get over there, but we can come over here and try C. This is an important example because something funny happens with the derivative. So when I take my derivative, when I bring the 2 thirds down, the 3's are going to cancel, I'm going to get 2x to the negative one-third minus two. Now this can be written as two over x to the one-third and then minus two. That doesn't look too bad, but this derivative is the first one that can actually be undefined, and that's still a critical point. This derivative can be undefined equals d n e when x is zero because if we plug in x is 0 into my derivative, I get an undefined. Now, can it also equal 0? So we need to set this also equal to 0 and check and see if I can find another critical point. So 2 over x to the 1 third would have to equal 2, and that value would be for x would be 1. So it equals 0 when x equals 1. So I'm going to have my candidates test. I'll have x, and I'll have f of x, now my x values, I need to check my endpoints and my critical points. So negative 1 was an endpoint. 0 was a critical point because it made the derivative undefined. It's still a critical point. 1 was a critical point because it made the derivative 0. And 8 was my last endpoint. So I'm going to use my calculator and plug them in to get y values. I got 6, 1, 2, and negative 3. So my statements would be f has an absolute maximum of the largest number I see here is 6 at x equals negative 1 and then f has an absolute minimum the smallest number I see here is, is negative 3 and that happens at x equals 8 alright so I need to erase a lot of this stuff so we can do our last trig example so I'm going to get down to my eraser here, and you can grab a drink or something while I'm, or maybe stretch. Go tell your mom you love her, something like that, or your dad too. Scroll up here, your puppy dog or something. La, 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 la. Erase, 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 erase. Okay, I hope you had that written down because I erased it. You know, 
Of course, you could go back and rewind, but whatever. Anyway, um, back to work. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take derivatives. So I'm going to do the derivative. And sine squared, you know, remember, you need to think about sine squared as sine of x squared. And I'm going to have to use the chain rule for this derivative. So my derivative is going to be 2 sine of x times the derivative of the inside, which is cosine x. And then the derivative of sine is negative sine. And I'm going to set this equal to 0. This is never undefined. Sines and cosines are nice, smooth little curves with no asymptotes. If this was a tangent, I'd have to be worried. So I'm going to factor out a sine of x, and I will get 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So I have two factors to set equal to 0, when sine equals 0 and when 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Well, sine is 0 at 0 pi and at 2 pi. There's other places, but I only need to look inside this interval. This would say that cosine is 1 half, and that happens at pi over 3 and also at 5 pi over 3. So here we go with our candidates test to finish this. We got x, and we have f of x, or y. So what we're going to plug in are our critical points and endpoints. We started at 0. We had a critical point of pi over 3. We had a critical point at pi. We had a critical point at 5 pi over 3. And we also had a critical point at 2 pi, which is also the endpoint. So it must be listed as well. And from my calculator, that's 1. That's 5 fourths. This one is negative 1. This is 5 fourths again. That's a weird looking 5. I'm sorry about that. And at 2 pi, it's 1. So I'm going to say that f has an absolute maximum of what's the biggest point or number you see here. Well, it's 5 fourths, and it happens at two places at pi over 3 and. 5 pi over 3. So there's two places where we have an absolute max. They're equal to each other. And then f has an absolute minimum of negative 1, and that just happens at one place, at pi. So that's what you're going to be doing, and I will see you guys tomorrow.